talked about solving. You guys should have worked on this homework six. Stop talking, please. Um, do you want to start with questions here for homework six? So, in this situation, if I look at the basis for my exponentials, it should be pretty clear that there's not going to be an easy way to rewrite them so that they have the same base. So, I'm just going to start off by taking the log of both sides. I would either choose to use log base one half or log base three. It doesn't really make a difference which one I use. Uh, for the sake of argument, I'm going to do log base one half. So the log base one half cancels the exponent base one half. And we're left with one minus three x. On the other side, we're going to use the power property that allows us to move the exponent of 2x plus 3 to the coefficient, log base 1 half of 3. Now, log base 1 half of 3 is just a number. Now, it's going to be like a yucky decimal. Can we stop talking, please? Uh, it's going to be a yucky decimal. But it's just something we can get in out of our calculator. So if I type log base 1 half of 3 into my calculator, I get this decimal. So I'm going to just round that to like negative 1.585. And then I'm going to distribute that. When I do that, I get three point sorry, negative three point uh, one seven zero plus oops, I mean minus negative four point six. There, it's negative 4.755. Okay, so far? So now I'm just going to move things onto one side. So, like, I'll add the 3.170x over to here and subtract the 1 over to the other side. and then just divide both sides by that 0.17. So that's going to be about negative 33.85. So don't let that fraction get you all scared, right? It still works the exact same way, and we're not even really having to deal with any fractions, right? It just still turns into, turn the log into a decimal on my calculator and just pound that through. Okay. Um, 
so the key here is noticing that we just have two logs that are equal to each other, and the logs have the same base, right? So I can just ignore the logarithms and just compare the insides together. So if I go and I try to solve this, I get x is equal to negative 11. But that doesn't check out, right? If I try to plug negative 11 back in, I get the log of a negative. So this one is just left as no solution. Joe? Uh, could you do number 10? And I also have a question about it before you start. When it says ln, is that when you use the value for e? So that's the same thing as log base e. Log base, okay. Um, so this one, I have stuff inside logs and stuff not inside logs. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a single logarithm. I'm going to do that by condensing these two logarithms using the product property. That becomes natural log of x plus 2 times x minus 3 equal to 2. Now I'm going to cancel the logarithm. So to cancel logarithm, I need to use the exponent base. The exponent base I need to use in this case is e, because it needs to match the base on my logarithm. So that stuff cancels, and I'm going to multiply this out as long as I'm recopying things. What's the base on ln? E. That's why I use the E. Oh, so you just trade out the ln for E? Nope. I did the exponent base of E to both sides. Oh, okay. Just like when we add something to both sides or multiply something to both sides, here I did an exponent base to both sides. Okay. Okay. Mr. Kulik, you did that so you could cancel out the logarithm in the exponent? Correct. Yes. So what I'm left with now is a quadratic equation, right? So to solve a quadratic equation, it's got to be equal to zero, so I'm going to subtract that e squared from both sides. But remember, e is just a number. So I'm going to just get a decimal here in my calculator. Like, e is a big crummy number, but it's still just a number. So I'm going to subtract the, negative, or the e from the negative 6. And when I do that, the decimal I get is like 13.389. And then I can use the quadratic formula from here. Since clearly that with that decimal, it's not going to be factorable, right? There's no sense in trying that. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. My one now grows. It's been doing that a lot recently. Uh, you know what? It has. It's Pretty frustrating. So negative b plus or minus square root. Now negative one is my b, so negative over the negative was positive. And then b squared, negative 1 squared is just 1. And then I have 4 times a times c. So 4 times 1 times that negative 13.389 number. 
gives me negative 53.556, and since it's minus a negative, I'm just going to write that as plus 53.556. And then I'm just going to do that now on my calculator to get those two decimals. So 1 plus the square root of 54.556 divided by 2 gives me 4.193. And that one's going to be okay, right? Because I'll get a positive here and a positive there. And then the other is I have to subtract go in and change that to a minus sign and that one won't be okay right because I'll this one for sure is negative if you have a negative minus something but the other one didn't work is that okay, Joe? Yeah, that was good. I was so, just confused. With the yeah, the, what, what you do with the E squared is just convert it into a decimal. You end up with a decimal to in your quadratic formula or whatever, but you just plug it, back. You just plug it in through the quadratic formula. Okay. And again, you might both answers might work, one answer might work, neither answer might work. You just have to check them. Okay. The so if the answer works, do you just cross them out or do you lay them with no solution? Yeah, you cross them both out and say no solution. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anybody else here? <coughs> okay. So our last topic that we're going to talk about here is graphing. logarithms and this should be a fairly easy um, topic here there's not much to it which is nice to end with right um, so our general form for our logarithmic equation is y equals a times log base p of x minus h plus k. Every logarithmic function has a special key feature. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals h. And we're going to pick our xy table in a very specific way. So the way we're going to pick our xy table is as follows. We're going to pick our x-coordinates by doing b to the negative 2 plus h, b to the negative 1 plus h, b to the 0 plus h, and then b to the 2 plus h, or b to the 1 plus h, and then b to the 2 plus h. To find our y-coordinates then, it's going to be negative 2a plus k, negative 1a plus k, 0a plus k, 1a plus k, and then 2a plus k. So we'll use that method to find our points that we're going to plot every time. Notice here that the number that's changing is the same number for the x-coordinate as the y-coordinate, right? The exponent of the x becomes the coefficient for the y. And then the last piece of information we need before we can start doing some examples is domain and range, which is pretty nice because the domain is always going to be h to positive infinity, both parentheses, and the range will always be all real numbers. 
So that's it. There's nothing too sneaky about any of this. Allie? So let's do a couple of examples and then we'll be done for today. So in the two cool the domain and range never change. Correct. It's always just the value of H plus infinity or whatever. Yep. H to positive infinity. And then the range is just that. All real numbers. Yep. So that shouldn't be too bad. So let's say we want to graph 3 times log base 2 of x plus 1 minus 4. I'm going to start by writing down my values for a, b, h, and k. Again, that should be very easy. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that the value for h is always the opposite of what it looks like in your equation. So here the h is negative 1, not positive 1. Again, I'm still seeing a fair number of us kind of make that mistake. So I'm going to just emphasize it one more time. Uh, our vertical asymptote then is x equals h, so that's x equals negative 1. And then we can make our xy table. So I'm going to have b to the negative 2 plus h. Instead of writing plus a negative, I'm just going to write it as subtraction. And then b to the negative 1 plus h. b to the 0 plus h. b to the 1st plus h. b to the 2nd plus h. I'll have negative 2 times a plus k. Again, instead of writing plus a negative 4, I'm just going to write minus 4. And then negative 1 times a plus k. 0 times a plus k. 1 times a plus k. And 2 times a plus k. So now I'm just going to simplify these to get the points that I'm actually going to plot. So 2 to the negative 2 minus 1 is negative 0.75. And then negative 0.5, 0, 1, and 3. Again, if you can't do those things in your head, no big deal. Just type it into your calculator, right? Easy enough to type that in. Uh, then we have negative 10 negative 7, negative 4, negative 1, and 2. Again, you can do those little arithmetic problems in your head, or you can type them into your calculator. Either is fine. So far, so good? No big deal, right? So let's draw our graph. Start with drawing in my asymptote. And then I have negative 0.75, negative 10. So that's going to be like there. And then negative 0.5, negative 7. It's like there. 0, negative 4 is like there. 1, negative 1 is there. And then 3, 2 would be there. Draw my graph then. So I'm connecting all my points. So it should have a curve, right? It shouldn't look like a straight line. 
and I should have arrows at both ends. Let's make that asymptote a little bit longer. So there's my graph. Arrows at both ends. It's curving, right? Not a straight line. Clear that it's not going through the asymptote with the way I've drawn it, right? So those would be the things that I'd be looking for when I'm looking at your picture. Show. Uh, I have a question about that asymptote. So how how you get that down? X um, equals H. Oh, so whatever H is is what your asymptote is? Yep. Okay. Yep. And then my domain is H, which was negative one, to positive infinity. And my range is always all real numbers. That's all there is to that one. Not bad. Not bad, right? It's quite similar to the exponential graphing yeah. that we did before, even the radical graphing that we did last chapter. So most of the graphing we've done this semester has looked pretty similar to this procedure. Um, let's do one more example and we'll call it a day. How's that sound to you guys? I thought it would be I thought you'd be down for that too. So let's say we're graphing y equals negative 2 times log base 1 third of x minus 4 plus 5. So again, I start by listing my values for a, for b, for h, and then k. Again, remember the h is the opposite sign of whatever it appears in the equation. So I know my vertical asymptote then is x equals h. And then let's build our xy table. So it's b plus h, oops, b to the negative 2 plus h, b to the negative 1 plus h, b to the 0 plus h, b to the 1 plus h, and then b to the 2nd plus h. And then we'll have negative 2 times a plus k, negative 2, I'm sorry, negative 1 times a plus k, 0 times a plus k, 1 times a plus k, and then 2 times a plus k. And then we'll just simplify this stuff down. So that's 13, that's 7, that's 5, that's 4.3 repeating, and that's 4.1 repeating. It's okay if you just round those. Um, that one's 9, that's 7, 5, 3, 1. And again, totally can just type that stuff in your calculator. I'm doing it in my head because it's easy for me to do it in my head. You can't do that in your head. That's totally okay. You can just type it in your calculator to get those numbers right. No big deal. It doesn't matter to me. There's no expectation you're doing mental math. Let's draw our graph then. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Put in my asymptote here at, at x equals 4. And then I'm actually going to start graphing at this end because those are the smaller numbers and I usually like to graph things from left to right. Doesn't really matter, but I'm just letting you know that I'm reading from the right end of the table to the left. So I have 4.1 and 1. Come on. 
this thing down. And then I have 4.3 and 3. And then I have 4, I'm sorry, 5 and 5. And then 7 and 7. And then 13 and 9. So there's my graph. Everybody okay with that? Yes, sir. Ma'am. I did that. Yeah, so to get the 9, I did negative 2 times negative 2 plus 5. So I just did that in my head. You could type it in your calculator if mental math is not your strong suit. That's okay. But I just, whatever was above it or below it, respectively. I just typed in my calculator to get the decimal. You're welcome. Uh, and the last thing I need is the domain and range. So the domain, again, is h to positive infinity, and the range is all real numbers. And that's it. This is good. We're looking good for the test, Mr. Porter. Yeah, this seems pretty, this should be pretty doable. Wait, can we get a half sheet? Um, we'll talk. I haven't finished writing the test yet, so let's let's do let's talk again on the review day. Sounds good. And we'll sort that out. Um, so your assignment for this lesson is just these three graphing problems. So I'm going to ask you to do the same thing we did in the examples. Write down your A, B, H, and K. Write down your vertical asymptote. Make your table. Draw your graph. Give me the domain and range. Right, no big deal there. Um, I also have in the content library the test review. Um, so again, the, your version of the test will look quite similar to the review in terms of what I'm going to ask. And then I also have the review key in there as you're working on the review if you wanted to check things before we meet on Tuesday next week. Um, gives you a chance to like highlight stuff that you're like, hey, I tried doing this, I couldn't get this at all. Maybe I did something dumb and typed the wrong number in my calculator when I was doing something, or maybe you just, you know, you're doing something wrong. But we can sort all that stuff out on Tuesday. Uh, does that sound good to you guys?